Let's talk about alternative sweeteners. When you get on a ketogenic diet, it's not a bad idea to transition off your regular sugar with some alternative sugars. And we like to call them alternative sweeteners, not artificial sweeteners, even though they're a bit artificial, but they're definitely better than the typical artificial sweeteners, as in aspartame, things like that. And so there's some really important things to know about these artificial sweeteners, because if you're going to get any of these keto products, they're usually going to have either some type of sugar alcohol, alternative sweetener, and especially these new functional fiber type ingredients for the textures, which I want to cover as well, because sometimes those are used as sweeteners when, in fact, there's no difference between those and sugar. So let's just start with uh, this popular brand, Lily's brand, chocolate chips, right? Um, these are the dark chocolate baking chips, and I do like these. They said no sugar added. And so if I look at the ingredients, it has unsweetened chocolate, erythritol, chicory root fiber, okay, that's fine, and stevia. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about erythritol is out of all the sweeteners, it's one of the better ones because it has virtually no calories, uh, it doesn't digest, that's why it has no calories. And also it's zero on the glycemic index compared to another one that I do like as well, uh, xylitol. Xylitol is like 30 on the glycemic index, erythritol is zero. Uh, xylitol tastes more like sugar, erythritol Sometimes you have to add it with monk fruit. It's close to sugar, but it doesn't compare, but it's a lot better on the glycemic index. If you were to compare both of those, I would say just consume small amounts when you need it. But erythritol is a little bit better. But again, if you're consuming just small amounts, it's not going to be that big of a deal. So let's just go through a couple more. Here's another product, Nutrail. Okay, blueberry cinnamon, nut granola. So this one has, um, you know, the sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, coconut almonds, pecans, and then erythritol and monk fruit. Okay. So monk fruit is similar to stevia. It comes from an actual fruit. There's no sugar in it. It's like zero on the glycemic index. So monk fruit is really good, but they usually have to combine it with other things to kind of make it taste like sugar. And stevia, by the way, is really good. The only thing you have to make sure about stevia is that make sure you get the one that doesn't come with maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is classified as a kind of a starch, uh, but in reality, it behaves like a sugar. In fact, if you look at the glycemic index, glucose is at 100. Maltodextrin is like way higher. It's like 120 or even 130. It's like crazy higher. So how can it be classified as just a a starch when it's really a sugar. It's a loophole. Uh, it's a way to tell people like, oh, this is sugar free, right? But it has a lot of carbs and those carbs behave like sugar. So always stay away from maltodextrin. And I talk about that in quite a few videos. Okay, let's look at another one right here. This one is brown sugar alternative. This one's erythritol. It also has glycerin, which also is sweet. And glycerin is a sugar alcohol, and apparently it's zero on the glycemic index, um, but that's just another sweetener that they use. And this one has stevia as well. Okay, so that's one sweetener. Uh, that would be fine to use. Um, let's take a look at uh, Keto Sweet, the ultimate sugar alternative, okay? This one has erythritol and natural flavors. Okay, so great. Okay, this could be used as well, non-GMO. Um, here's one right here called Sweet Leaf, better than sugar. Okay, this one has organic erythritol, organic stevia. I like that. So this could be used as well, right? So these sugar alcohols are fine, but one point I want to bring up is that sometimes they can cause fluid retention. Sometimes they can create bloating, diarrhea, very powerful diarrhea if you have too much. They can upset your microbiome to a certain degree, all sorts of like grumbling sounds in your stomach. So you just have to be aware of them and not do too much. And even some of them, well, more of the artificial sweeteners really kind of can mess up your microbiome and have a potential increase in insulin and definitely keep your cravings going on because you have this sweetener all the time. And so if you can't keep giving into the sweetener, you might just constantly have cravings for a different reason than just having low blood sugars. 
So again, I think these things are good when you transition off sugar and maybe as an occasional dessert treat, but I don't personally consume a lot of these on a regular basis. All right, so let's cover another one. Smart sweets. They say, kick sugar, keep candy. Three grams of sugar per bag. The first ingredient is soluble corn fiber. I don't like soluble corn fiber. First of all, the way they process it, it's extremely refined. So they're taking this corn starch and they're turning it into a fiber. They have to do that with a whole chemical process. There's not any long-term safety studies on this. And I don't even know if it's, you know, non-GMO or organic. Well, actually it's, it says it's, doesn't say one way or the other. Okay. So anyway, I recommend you stay away from corn fiber. And there's another one called tapioca fiber. They might call it uh, prebiotic. I would stay away from that one as well, because I just don't trust these new functional fibers because they're promoting them as a health thing without the safety. And they're all just new on the market and they give a nice mouth uh, feel or a, a texture, but they're produced by the real big companies that produce ultra processed foods. So I guess I just don't trust them. Allulose is another uh, alternative sweetener that's not a sugar alcohol, but it's very similar to the chemistry of glucose, but they've altered in a way that uh, doesn't affect your blood sugar because you can't absorb it, but it's very similar to sugar. Okay, here's one. Isomalto oligosaccharides. For that, I need to show you something because I used to promote this so-called um, sugar alternative as Vita fiber, the sweet side of fiber. So it's classified as a fiber, but it's not a fiber. I don't even know if the FTA allows someone to even call it a fiber anymore, but they call it a sugar-free, low-calorie, prebiotic fiber sweetener. Isomalto oligosaccharides. Well, first of all, do you know what a saccharide is? That's a sugar. It's a very complex structure. And a lot of times they'll have it in a liquid, like a syrup, and it's used in a lot of different bars, keto bars. I do not recommend it because I drank the Kool-Aid and I started promoting it and I started using it in ingredients. And I noticed, man, this is almost too good. This is too good to be true. And so I noticed that people were complaining like they're, they're gaining weight from it. I found some data that shows that it, it acts just like a sugar. In fact, there's one study that shows it mimics glucose almost exactly the same. So this is not a fiber. This is a scam. And you think it's keto, but it's not. So this product right here is not good. But stay away from isomalto oligosaccharides. Okay, so then they had chicory root fiber. That's fine. Rice flour. Mm, that's not keto. Modified potato starch, that is not keto. So that's the starch. Because if you look at the uh, total carbohydrates, this little packet has 42 grams of carbohydrates. So you're like, oh, but it's, it's high in fiber. That's because it says it's 13 grams of fiber and it has um, three grams of sugar. Then what are all these other carbohydrates? Starch. So you really have to read carbohydrates, fiber and sugar and kind of understand and see through those numbers to see what's really going on. All right, next one is monk fruit sweetener. Monk fruit, erythritol and monk fruit. Perfect, I like it. You can use this. Okay, let's look at uh, Lily's brand milk chocolate covered caramel. Hmm, no sugar added. Okay, so we have um, unsweetened chocolate, dextrin. This is a fiber. Again, I don't like these functional fibers. Is it as bad as um, some of the sugars? Probably not. Um, could you have it in small amounts? Sure. Just don't get in the habit of thinking that this is totally good for you because it might create problems. And I just, I'm suspect. Just try not to do too much of this. Okay, it also has erythritol, chicory root fiber, stevia. Okay, so that's this. And then we have another one called Lily's Chocolate Styled Peanut Butter Cups. Okay, this one, same thing, dextrin, erythritol, same ingredients. Okay, if you want this occasionally, fine. 
Just don't go crazy with it. All right. Next one is almond, dark chocolate, and they have different kinds. Okay. No sugar added. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, it's better. If you want a little bit after your lunch, because it's probably going to have caffeine from the chocolate, fine. But just if you start having digestive issues and fluid retention and you're not losing weight, then you might want to get rid of it. Unsweetened chocolate. And then we have dextrin. Okay. Dextrin, erythritol, and stevia. Okay. Here's another one. This is by Lily's too. This is milk chocolate style. And But this right here is pretty much the same. Same ingredients to dextrin. Okay. But there's another one. Uh, this is the one that I wanted to show you. Peanut butter filled. Whoa. A little thicker. Looks great. Looks very tasty. And this one has in it dextrin, erythritol. Okay, so it's pretty much the same. Um, as far as carbohydrates go, it has 14 grams per serving. So this is the other thing you need to calculate. How many serving sizes per bar? And the answer is two and a half. So basically, you have to times two and a half times those 15 grams of carbs. You get 37.5 grams of carbs. It's 21 grams of, of fiber. So where is this fiber coming from? The dextrin. Interesting. Now, there's one sugar alcohol that I would really stay away from. It's called maltitol. Maltitol is in a lot of sugar-free diabetic type candy. It's very high in the glycemic index. I mean, it tastes just like sugar. And um, it's higher than erythritol. And they still classify it as low, but it's high. The other thing I want to mention is agava nectar. They'll say that's a low glycemic sugar because it's very, very high in fructose. I think it's like 80% fructose. And fructose is low on the glycemic index. But what they don't tell you is that the liver is forced to metabolize fructose. So you're going to overload your liver compared to regular glucose, which all your cells can share the metabolism of with fructose. It's just shoved to the liver and... Um, the liver is forced to deal with it. And so it's increased the risk of a fatty liver and creating similar effects to alcohol, believe it or not. So this uh, agave nectar is not very friendly. Now, if we take a look at honey, regular table sugar, even high fructose corn syrup, it's roughly about 50-50 glucose and fructose. But agave nectar is like 80% fructose. The other one that I want to mention is coconut sugar. That's not too much better than just regular sugar. Okay. And then brown sugar is a little molasses with white sugar. It's very similar to the effects of sugar. Molasses is just cane sugar with um, all the vitamins and minerals. So of course that's better nutrient wise, but um, it's still the same amount of sugar. So you have to be careful of that and avoid that. Certain alternative sugar products are good to have in small amounts, but not all the time. But they can act as an alternative, especially for like kids and people that have a hard time. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side.